So today I'm going to be talking about the effects of heat stress on reproductive efficiency and replacement kilns. Before we get started in our conversation, our discussion in uh, heat stress and gilts, I first wanted to talk about some advantages and disadvantages of the swine industry today. Some advantages of the swine industry today include the reduction of the spread of disease and that diseases are more easily able to be eradicated, so to speak, and controlled um, from spreading onto the further farms. There's also an advantage of the modern industry today in, the, in that we have an increase in the number of pigs that are produced per year. And that has to do with an increase in conception rates through AI practices, which is artificial insemination. However, there are some disadvantages of the swine industry today. Some, in, some disadvantages, one of the major ones resulting out of the industry today, include gilts and sows are often exposed to heat from the environment, consequently resulting in the animal to be heat stressed. If the animal is heat stressed, uh, there's a lot more opportunity for the animal not to be able to reproduci reproductively um, be as efficient as it, she could optimally be. There's also another disadvantage that a lot of consumers bring up today and that pigs are in gestation crates. Um, there's a movement to put pigs in pens where, that, where they are more um, able to be freely moved around. This has been disproven by some publications that sows are aggressive and they like to obtain a pecking order um, on who is more able to obtain um, the most feed. In order to look at one of the major following um, problems in the swine industry today, uh, which is heat stress, we first have to look and understand what a definition of heat stress is. Heat stress is the overabundance of heat, which results in an imbalance between thermal energy flowing into and out of the animal. So to speak, it's the animal being overheated and obtaining too much heat and not being able to regulate it and lose the heat to have homeostasis, home, homeostasis. Symptoms of heat stress include weakness, a respiration rate that exceeds 40 breaths per minute, skin, red, skin redness, and a rectal temperature of 43 degrees Celsius. Sows, will, sows and gilts will often um, be on the ground laying down um, panting very, very heavily um, since their sweat glands um, are not very accessible or being able to use. One, one, some major reasons why we should consider heat stress is the major um, environmental uh, limiting factor to the industry today and being able to create more optimally efficient uh, environment for production practices. One, right off the bat, it's inhumane to keep an animal um, heat stressed in an environment when we have the ability to keep that animal free from any type of stress. Another reason, from an economic standpoint, is that it costs the swine industry over $300 million a year. That's $55 per sow, a gilt, and gilt each year. Plus, this also makes feeding 9 billion people by 2050 more difficult if reproduction rates go up. Some of the effects of heat stress in reproductive physiology include a reduction in conception rates, reductions in farrying rates, and in embryonic survival, prolonged weaning to mating intervals, and a reduction in pigs weaned per litter per year. With the, with the risk of embryonic survival, some can say that heat stress is a teratogen, which is any agent that affects the growth of a fetus during development. Among my opportunities, here at Purdue have had a unique opportunity to be a part of a research study um, with gilts and sows that involved heat stress and 
proper ways to counter heat stress um, versus gradual cooling methods and rapid cooling methods. Our hypothesis was that rapid cooling methods after he acute heat stress for two consecutive days prior to breeding would reduce overall reproductive efficiency in gilts. Furthermore, our study entitled Two Thermal Treatments, which was our thermal neutrality treatment and our heat stress treatment. These treatments were administered on two consecutive days after estrus was confirmed in all pigs on trial to mimic a two-day heat wave. Estrus is the time where the sow or gilt is most optimally like able to receive uh, semen um, due to ovulation, which is the time where she would be most optimally able to reproduce. Um, any other time outside of estrus, she cannot necessarily reproduce. So estrus is extremely critical here. For the heat stress group, they were broken down in two subcategories, rapid cooling and gradual cooling. For the, new, for the thermal neutrality treatment, it was equivalent to keeping a, a sow or a gilt in an optimal temperature environment that they should be under without being heat stressed. Our, heat, our research study consisted of 36 replacement gilts at approximately 135, 137 kilograms. Um, they were estrus synchronized and approximately 14 days after estrus confirmation, pigs were exposed to thermal neutral, neutral conditions, which were about 19 degrees Celsius, which would be approximately 60 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit. They were exposed to this condition for six hours. And our heat stress, which is 36 degrees Celsius, was exposed for three hours at a time. For our research study, pigs were bred eight days after thermal treatments over a two-day period. They were done so using AI, or artificial insemination, as the picture shows. For our rapid cooling treatment, for a thermal, for our rapid cooling um, subtreatment, this was achieved by for, by moving the pigs from a heat stress room directly into a thermal neutral room, which was 1.5 meters in walking distance. Once the pigs were from moved from a hotter room to a colder room, they were. We then poured 15 gallons of water at approximately 4 degrees Celsius on the backs of individual pigs for 30 minutes for an hour and a half, for a total of four times. For our gradually cooling pigs, this was performed by reducing the heat stress room, the ambient temperature, which is the surrounding temperature in the room, by 5 degrees Celsius every 30 minutes until we reached a thermal neutral environmental condition of about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Data from the rapid and gradual cooling collected um, was our vaginal, we collected the vaginal and gastrointestinal tracts temperatures, gastrointestinal tract temperatures. Um, they were obtained and every 15 minutes blood was collected and during day one and two, during the heat stress and recovery periods at 180 and 60 minutes. Furthermore, we also collected reproductive tracts um, and total fetus numbers and evaluated viability after they were recorded 28 days after insemination. As we concluded our study, we discovered that gradual cooling methods are more advantageous. Furthermore, they're more advantageous uh, because they, one suggest, one measurement that suggested this was the percent viable fetuses that tended to be reduced in the heat stress rapid cooling measurement. 
compared to the heat stress gradual cooling method and the thermal neutral cells, which were our control cells. Another reason was the percent moribund fetuses that tended to be tended to be increased in heat stress rapid cooling environments compared to heat stress gradual cooling environments and thermal neutral cells. This would be equivalent to fetuses uh, being born with the defects, so to speak. And this data proved that heat stress rapid cooling would produce more um, defected fetuses um, and piglets one day to be born than gradual cooling would. And lastly, we found no differences in the viable or moribund fetuses um, between the heat stress and gradual cooling and the thermal neutral cells, which was our control. Which furthermore proved the point that uh, heat stress gradual cooling methods were um, the closest thing we could possibly attain to having a thermal neutral environment for our cells and fields. While, um, so to speak, all these benefits of gradual cooling happened, we also had some negative um, information from the rapid uh, cooling experiment, part of the experiment that I also wanted to highlight. It also, heat stress, when we rapid cooled for our heat stress um, experiment, it resulted in intestinal damage and increased um, in cytokine circulation. It also reduced fetal viability and reproductive success in pigs. Furthermore, I would like to discuss now, um, now that I've stated where the swine industry is today on environmental heat stress, I would like to give a little brief um, introduction of um, what we have to look forward to in the future. Right now, we are currently using many swine, um, many people within the swine industry are now using mist fans in the barn to help cool gilts and sows for a gradually cooling environment. However, here at Purdue University, recently in Dr. Schinkel's um, lab, he's working on a sow cooling pad. These sow cooling pads, um, or a sow, these sow cooling pads provide an environment for the sow or gilt um, to lay on a pad within a gestation grate um, where they can lay down and better lower their body temperature versus having mist being constantly sprayed on them. This has been proven um, and is still under research here at Purdue University to be um, more effective than the mist fans in that it provides more of a constant body temperature um, to be attained at optimal levels for reproductive efficiency. These are my references. Thank you for listening.